Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 5, I think, of the Anime Nomad podcast where I'm joined by the saviors of the anime community to talk about the savior of anime, that is, Kill a Kill. So, uh, I am Rising Sun Reviews. If you do not know me, then I'm wondering how you found this channel, but I make reviews in Strant List and Top Things and Giant Excel Spreadsheets. I'm also... And Hentai Reviews. Those two, sometimes. I'm also joined today <laughs> by Abby. Hi-o, I'm Abby of uh, Visual Evaluations. You can find me on YouTube. Yep. And That's really it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, 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 um, I edit for Rising sometimes. <laughs> he edits my hentai reviews. <laughs> and I am also joined by Astro. Hello, I am Astro325. Currently my channel is nothing, so don't go there. And I am joined by the wonderful and amazing Bill. Hi, I'm Bill. I got dragged into this. We did not know Bill would be doing this until after I hit record. And last but most certainly not least, I am joined by the wonderful and amazing and super special Sea Tactics. Well, thanks for calling me special, but uh, yeah. And we also joined by Khalids, who is in here listening because we are so professional. Because he's weird. Yeah. We actually have a live, live, a live audience this time. Yes. Yay. Of oh, one person. Oh, this cool light no, was good. What's wrong? Are you sick now? So I draw, the old Kool-Aid turns out to be really old and not good for you. Maybe you should not drink so, it. So, before we started recording, I'm going to clarify. C had the bright idea of drinking what I can only presume to be weak old Kool-Aid that, that had been sitting on his desk, and now he might throw up. Watch the bloopers. You'll figure it out what happened. Anyway, uh, links to everyone's stuff will be in the description, like everyone's YouTube, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, all that stuff. If they're not been deleted yet. Yeah, I need to network, please. I use Dig. My Pornhub channel. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask you to send me a link to that so I could put it there, but I don't think I want to. Yeah, I think that would get you a strike. <laughs> okay, so uh, today we're talking about Kill a Kill. Uh, we're going to start off with some like spoiler-free overview of what we think about it so if you want to know if you should watch it and without being spoiled listen to that and then go leave while we spoil everything including the hentai scene you know what i'm talking about Bill knows exactly what you're talking about okay incest <laughs> yes thanks bill so uh first question to everyone would you recommend this show and to what audience okay yeah um it's a trigger show this is my second trigger show if you count darling um yeah it's just it's very off the wall crazy you're not getting a standard show out of this <laughs> that's really all i can say if you, if you want a fun hype time and maybe get something more out of it just something a little bit more out of it than that then i'd recommend this yeah all right astro I feel like this is an anime if like you want a really if you want good action but also you want real quirkiness to it and some story good show it does have a couple of uh, interesting moments it is <laughs> interesting it's a good way for the show anyway uh, Bill what do you think um if you like really good action and you like <laughs> uh. yeah uh, my thoughts, I just think this is a really fun show, but it also has like a really good action uh, story. Like, I'm a big fan of action shonen shows, and this feels just like an action shonen, but with everything taken completely to the extreme. Yeah. So if you like action, and you like shonen, and you like trigger, definitely watch this. Be if you don't know what those are, watch it and find out. Uh, see? Uh, I would recommend this show... If you are the person who likes Gainax anime, uh, and likes, like Evangelion, like Evangelion <laughs> or <laughs> Furry Curry, uh, if you like any of those kinds of shows, uh, Panty and Stocking, it's, it's right up your mm -hmm. alley. Basically, if you're a fan of 90s anime, you'll like this. Even though it's not 90s anime. 90s That's style. Nice. Maybe. Yes. Uh, drugs that they did in the 90s, they did for this one too. They, they got the box set. It's like, all right, guys, we're going to make another trigger anime. Anyway. Okay. Uh, okay, now we're moving on to spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, go away and go watch my hentai reviews because those don't have spoilers. Because I not even I see the hentai before I review them. I do when I edit them. 
I'm sorry, Avi. Make sure you come back after you get done watching Gear <laughs> Rock Hero, though. Yes, because this is going to be the greatest podcast that we've ever done, probably. So pause, come back three days later, and, and watch this. Okay, so spoiler time. Uh, first question is, like, what were your expectations coming into Kill a Kill? So, m- my expectations were just, I don't, like, a fun time, because I've heard a lot of conflicting things, because it's very controversial anime, and I, I listen to Podtaku or just random stuff here and there on Twitter and people in the server. I've always heard mixed things. I, like, a lot of people love it, and things say it's a blast, and some people just kind of trash it for its structure and stuff like that. It's kind of mixed uh, feelings about it. Astra, what did you think going into it? I was kind of expecting a dumb fan service anime and got out of it a real great show. All right, uh, Bill, oh, Bill had seen this before he watched it as a group, so do you remember what you thought or what you were expecting when you first went to go see it? I was expecting a um, really fun show with a lot of boobs and that's what I got. A.K.A. Kajo. Also, go watch that video. Uh, yeah. Uh, My expectations when I first saw it was, like, right after it finished airing. And there's a lot of people, like, questioning it wasn't really that good. Some people thought it was awesome. So I was kind of hesitant, but I ended up, like, having a lot of fun with it. And then for this rewatch, I was really looking forward to getting t- near the end with all the twists there. But I ended up finding out, like, the beginning a lot more than I did before. So that was good. Ah. Uh... I originally watched this um, either when it was about to finish airing or right when it started airing. And I got six episodes in, and at the time, I didn't really like what was going on. And I expected an awesome action fight from beginning to end, not any kind of fan service stuff. So that's kind of the reason why I dropped it. And then, you know, when I initially picked it back up, uh, I, I was just like, I don't even care like if this is going to be bad or good or I'm going to hate it or not. I just want to watch it with some friends, so that's what I did. Yeah, don't co- go into this not expecting fan service. Uh, and what was your guys' uh, favorite character? Definitely, um, actually, probably Ryuko or uh, Mikisagi. And then shout out to um, that one, that one, uh, Takarada? Yeah, Takarada. Just because of his dub voice acting. <laughs> yeah. The gangster guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was absurd. In an already absurd show. <laughs> yes. They basically took it to the extreme. Wait, um, Astra, favorite character? Uh, I don't remember his name, but I have to say Red Mohawk, dude. Uh, Sunaga, or what was his name? I don't know. Huh. Put a picture of him up. Show that. Uh, okay, uh, Crazy <laughs> Mohawk, uh, dude? Yes, there. Picture yeah. right there. Okay, yep. Uh, whoever it is, just remember who had a picture there. By the way, that's Sumi- probably me. Sumigo Kinagase? Yes, him. Yes, yes him. That guy. Sumigo. So like him. Why, why do you think he was your favorite character? Um, kind of similar style to the gangster person. The absurdity of his character, and in general, quite a funny character sometimes. Yeah, I guess it is absurd that anyone could use like sewing needles as a weapon. I'm going to kill you with needles. What was this line? Like, I have two things to say. I have two things to tell you, and he always started <laughs> like that. <laughs> two things you need to know. Why do I keep repeating this line? And shut the fuck up. Bill, favorite character? Oh, Ryoko's best girl. Uh, without anyone who says otherwise. And... Kamigori is best boy. Okay, I'll grab the Kamigori, but I might have to fight you on the other one. Oh, wow. You want to go? <laughs> beat up. I mean, Sasuke's pretty good. Don't yeah, beat up, I mean, Bill. Sasuke okay, is trash? Ryoko is like the third greatest female character in all of anime. And she is also the third greatest female character in this anime. Is that rainbow hair? Uh, what's her name? Oh, no. No, that's, that's Ragu. Uh, okay. My favorite is Sasuke, though, who yep. is like the antagonist for half the show. And, and Rising did just say Mako is better than Ryuko, audience. I did say that. I did <laughs> that. Because, like, Mako, how can you not like Mako? I should ask that to answer the questions. But yeah, Sasuke, just because, like, how overpowering she is of everything, and, like, then she's got the heel flick. She... Yeah, like, she's had this whole, like, presence about her. You pigs in human clothing. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like how she was playing all along to backstab her mother, uh, literally. Uh, 
And then when she was captured, she fought her way out with her toenail. <laughs> Scraping like, the ground. Ah! She, and she might be the only character with a character arc. I'd say Ryoka gets one too, but yeah. not quite the same as Satsuki. Yeah. Or the most drastic, at least. Yeah, like, even in the end, when Satsuki was, like, giving up fighting, just, like, how how you could tell that she was ready to put all this behind her. She's done calling people pigs. I mean, I guess Satsuki is okay. If you, like, <laughs> bondage or something. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't pick Mako. Yeah, Mako is also awesome, but I can guess I can uh, fanboy about her later. I'll slap some sense into you without making any. Exactly. Put, editor, put that uh, picture thing up. You might need to send it to the editor. Don't worry, the editor has it on his computer. Are you the editor? Wow. Yes. <laughs> I think I'll be my tell. See, uh, yeah. best character. Um, I, I think it's a tie between two very, very similar looking characters. Both of them are, in fact, lollies but uh mm. the one i think oh, no. I, I think the one i like the most is the music lolly the, the, wow. the music lolly yeah the music lolly non on jock yeah, jock yes. uh music lolly I, is good lolly i liked her fight because she tur- she makes a giant musical mech and i thought that was hilarious <laughs> of course the musician goes for the musical and i like her voice actress as well for both japanese and english She's so great. She even like changes the OST to be what she wants. She's yeah, great. doesn't she play like some uh, the opening song at one point, or is that just playing in the background? Maybe. No, she played a lot of she, Beethoven stuff. That's what she played. She stuff. Yeah, some Beethoven, some Mozart, I think. And of course, you know, Nui is great because it's Nui. So I don't, I don't think anyone really needs to explain that. Nui can fuck off. She's annoying, but then it's kind of amusing. Nui is undefeatable. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> she's annoying, overpowered. Like she's like the anti Mako. It's so annoying. I, I actually want to ask this then. Who's your fa- oh, because uh, C picked non non? Who's your favorite Elite Four character? Uh, what's the blue guy? Uh, the probe guy. Yes. I mean, his power mm-hmm. sounds very weird, but uh. Oh, Inamuta. Inamuta. Yes, I like him. It's like yeah, what is it? Probe regalia. It's like oh boy. <laughs> That's Gamagori's. It's Gamagori. No, Gamagori's is the Shaka regalia. Oh, Sha- yeah, Shaka. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. like I thought Probe was the yeah, blue probe. guy. I'm sorry. Yeah. I like Inamuta because he reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> when did you, when did you gouge your eyes out and become blind? What? Wait, which one do you like? Inamuta, oh. the computer guy, because oh, oh same guy, right? <laughs> yeah, my job's kind of to do things with computers. Uh, though I think my theory of the Elite Four has to be Gamagori because he's taller than I am. What is he, seven <laughs> one? Yes, Gamagori is just perfect. He's absurd. Yes. And apparently Shout a bit of a Mako. masochist. Yes, I, I ship Gamagori Mako. I mean, I think that's canon. <laughs> I mean, it might as well be. <laughs> yeah, it's, kind of, it's either Mako and Gamagori or Mako and Ryoko, depending on how you interpret that. How scene. about you, Bill? Who's your favorite of the Elite Four? Oh yeah, come go right, definitely. <laughs> of course, Bill goes for the masochist. Also, oh. yeah, mine's either I love them all, but it's probably Sunny Gamma because the whole absurdity with him blinding himself. Haha, <laughs> I'm blind <laughs> now. Wait, this doesn't help me any. I am now able to see you again. But obviously, Gamagori and Nanon are great. I kind of wish the Elite Four like had more moments to shine as individuals, though, like in the later part of the show. See, the thing I was confused about this entire time is because since this is a high school, no one's older than eighteen. So you see, Gamagori. Gamagori is like twenty. Okay, well, he, twenty yeah, still he's, he's quite large. Years. Yeah, he weighed twenty year old. Satsuki. But you see him when he's eighteen or nineteen. It's like what? I mean, he's just really so dumb. Tired. I mean, they, like I keep repeating myself. They keep adding absurdity to an already absurd show. Yes, like the other set of absurd characters new to speech. They just double the amount of insanity. Oh, is yeah, that crazy I, enough? Add more. Because, but, of course, you need a terrorist organization called new to speech in a show like this. That likes to not wear clothes. Yeah. That's the name. <laughs> yeah. And yet one so of them doesn't like being naked. Ironically. 
Yeah, all the sensory <laughs> reminds me of Grand Blue. Like giant purple <laughs> beams of light coming from their crotch. And their, and their glowing <laughs> purple good. nipples. Well, if Kill Kill they, like had creative like camera things with stuff to block it, in Grand Blue they just had like black circles. Yeah. That's... Why well, does but... the need to censor like that? <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> like, you can't do Kill a Kill without... What, you don't have light nipples out now? Yeah. Well, if you had to, if you tried to censor Kill a Kill, you would just have to cut everything. <laughs> Nothing would be making it through. So, speaking of censoring, what do you think of the fan service in here? Do you think it was good or bad or both? I was actually pretty down for it, personally, because I, I knew about it going in, just like seeing Kill a Kill reviews and stuff, and I kind of accepted that that would be part of the show. And it's really, I don't even find it that distracting because it's just mixed it with the action. Like I don't think they're doing it that much outside of the um, the Sen Cats and June Cats moments. Yeah, I just thought it was pretty it's like, fun. It's like they're intentional with it and so over the top. That's kind of that it like adds to the fun. It fits, ironic. It fits somehow compared to the other anime where it's like oh, this is kind of distracting now. And yeah, they do have an arc for Ryuko to accept that she's showing so much skin in, like, the first right. few episodes. Yeah, so it's like she... At first, she's kind of embarrassed by it, but then she just accepts it, and then it's like it's not even there, kind of. The one boxer, he's like, oh, you're trying to seduce me. Then he gets down to his boxers, and it's like, what are you doing? This is... Oh, I don't want to see oh that. Oh, God. Okay, I'm revising my best character, Senkets. Senkets? Oh, yes, yeah, Senkets is... <laughs> he is the best article of clothing in all anime. It's weird seeing her... Not in Sinket, because you see, I believe, most of the anime, maybe all of it, until right up in the end, and she's not wearing it. It's like, what? It's so bizarre. Yeah, Sinket might have burned up in the atmosphere. How tragic. Yeah, did, yeah, then, like, the OVA, she's back to wearing normal clothes, even though it kind of showed her in Sinket as, like, an illusion thing, or, like, symbol, symbolic thing. Right. So how does that count as a sailor uniform? Because I've never seen something like that here. Uh, Japanese sailor. <laughs> what kind of sailor uniform is that? Just you've got suspenders right across the nipples. That's it. Well, before before he transforms. Oh, so well, that's a weird looking yeah. sailor uniform. Yeah, go watch High School Fleet, then you get to see sailors. Anyway, uh, what was I going to ask next? Oh yes, uh, plot twist. Do they surprise you, or did you see them coming? I kind of near the end. I was surprised when. Uh, Ragia? Who is Rainbow? I can't remember her name. Rainbow hair person. Ragia? Rainbow hair? Oh, Rainbow hair? Yeah. Yeah, Ragia. Ragia. I was surprised when she killed herself. I thought she got killed by a... Or I thought she would have been killed by Sinkets or Ryuko or something. Yeah, I think part of it was like Ryoko was trying to like uh, mend the family relationship and saying that you can like they can be a family again. But, yeah, it's, like, one of the things that all throughout the show is, like, the importance of family and, like, Ryoko, like, finding her new family with Satsuki and Maka's family. So it's showing, like, she cares about her family even if they are uh, the villain. I don't remember anything that happened. Great. I've seen the show twice. It's just one big fever dream with a lot of incest and boobs. <laughs> she just blacked out as soon as he saw Gong Glory. Yeah, I actually didn't remember it that well either. Just because... For me, it was just a, a hype show, but well, I for mean, me, it, it kind of. Sense. Oh, I'm sorry, Astro. It kind of jammed together when we watched like four or five episodes one night. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, I, I just kind of a giant blank spot there. Like, wait, what happened? Yeah, like near the end, like every, it seemed like every episode the story changed a ton. <laughs> then they have like the girl in the gone ship thing. It's like, what? <laughs> They're ripping off their own plot. For me, the the Santa plot twists were like that. Uh, Nui was the one who killed her father. When oh, was yeah. And then the ones... Anyone... Any twists involving the character relationships? Like, obviously, Satsuki and Ryuko. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't and, think that uh, would happen. Satsuki turning on Ragyo at the end, obviously. Yeah, Satsuki turning on Ragyo was, like, the big twist for me. Like, up in... Especially how much it changed the show as a whole. Yeah, I feel like that was the main plot yeah. twist. And then you got, like, yeah, like at first you think, okay, this is fun, but you didn't really see where it was going. Then at that point, it's like, okay, now the plot's really going. Yeah, that's when the show actually has a, a strict plot. That's when it kicks it into overdrive. Yeah, but apparently some people here saw some of the twists coming. Yeah, um, 
I generally agree with most of the twists. I like most of them. You know, Sotsky one, Nui one. Those are pretty good. Uh, I knew by like episode nine or ten, eleven maybe. I don't know. Uh, pr- pretty much in the for- first quarter, early early second quarter, that they were gonna be sisters. I I could. I just knew that was gonna happen. Was there any like foreshadowing you picked up on, or is yeah, this a just a feeling? Yeah, a lot of foreshadowing they were putting in there, uh, and I just, I just, I don't know. I just knew it was going to go that way, and I was like, "It's, it's so they could easily do that." Like we don't know who the father is, and for a moment, I actually thought Senketsu is going to be like some weird hybrid, like uh, man dress thing and like they were gonna like make Sinketsu be the father of Ryoko or something like that like something crazy but that didn't turn out to be real so I was glad that didn't happen <laughs> but uh, uh, definitely disappointed on the sister thing I felt it was a little bit telegraphed in certain places and uh, yeah I knew it yeah. I just knew it was gonna happen I think it might be for me like I was not expecting the show to have that much of a like complicated story so like the foreshadowing just went by me yeah there's a lot of criticisms of the the structure of the show at least early on like i heard a lot of people yeah. say that they start like in the show around episode 18 oh. with this big sosny plot twist and when the plot yeah. kicks off but i actually love the first half where it's just a slow build up the first half better the election arc I agree. I might even agree, yeah. Yeah, I would disagree that the first half is better, but I think it did a lot to like set up the world and the characters, That and that is what made the second half be able to work so well. Yeah, I think once it hit the second, second half, half, the way it started felt... speeding up. Sorry, but second half uh, felt like it just came and went. Yeah, it was just kind of there, and then it was gone. Because uh, it was kinda. so fast-paced. There were so many things happening. And there is this one episode where that crazy hipster guy returned and like everything's on fire or whatever and I just didn't really care for it and I think the second half had a lot of weaker episodes compared to the first in my opinion just for my personal tastes yeah I think I would disagree because I liked all the stuff that was happening and that made it more exciting yeah I don't know if I prefer one half over the other specifically but I love the first for its clear structure like, the first few episodes are paced really well, how it built up to Satsuki. And then there's some interesting stuff after that with New to Speech. And then the election arc's probably my favorite. Ah. Yeah, and I still... I think the election arc was my least favorite because it's just, like, pure action. Though I guess we did get backstories, too. At least until Nui showed up. First episode, also, it's just... When you talk about first episodes in anime, Kill on Kill has a really good first episode. I love yeah, the Senkai th- scene. I think it's like the perfect first episode to show like this is what the show is. Yeah, it shows you enough of what it is, and at the same time, uh, it it's it like gives you enough of mystique of what the story can like do and what and it kind of mis- misleads you almost some, and that's what I like about it. Yeah, and I thought it was cool just, like, you get the tone of the show, even if you don't really get that much of a plot. And I think that's really good for people who aren't sure they can see that, see, is this fun and exciting? If so, then you'll like the rest of it. But if you just think it's completely stupid and you don't enjoy it, then you won't enjoy the rest. Mm-hmm. For me, what I liked about the first episode is that it sets up a clear, like, end game for the series, at least for the first, or what we think is an end game for the first half, at least. Because the first half of the series really is Ryuko working towards the the club presidents, then the Elite Four, and then Satsuki. And they kind of and they introduce that structure really well, and then it just follows that path. And I think in some ways, though, they kind of like subvert that structure, like having the battle of Satsuki in episode three. Yeah, they do for sure. And then, like, she doesn't really have any important fights with the club presidents after that. Like, you get uh, Sanagewa in, like, episode 5, I think. And then after that, you get the new speech guys. And then there's Mako as a club president, which was just really different. That episode was awesome. Yeah, it, like, it was, like, 
the plot didn't really advance much, but it was still so thematically rich. As soon as you see her walk out and she's got her own Goki uniform, it's like, wait, what? Yeah, and I loved how they did that with Maka too. Like, gave her a Goku uniform to fight a couple times to just be awesome there, even though that wasn't, like, her main contribution to the show. Yeah, hers is two star or three? Two. Two, okay. Yeah, she was she really, was the, really strong. <laughs> yeah, she's probably by far the strongest two star. Yeah. Rival, she, she rivals three stars for sure. Yeah. Well, like... Like, in episode, like, 22 or 23, when she got it back for the final battle, like, they showed her stats, and they were all maxed out except for intelligence. <laughs> Which, it's Mako. She doesn't need intelligence. She doesn't need a brain. But yeah, that, that episode that Ryzen just referenced, that's a very, that was a very on-the-nose commentary of capitalism, but it was very funny. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Kill a Kill has all these, like, very obvious themes, and normally it'd be, feel like this show is just trying to be preachy or bash you over the head with it, but it's like all so over the top, it doesn't come across that way. And it was only 20 minutes that it really yeah, focused so on that idea. Yeah, 20 minutes to fit that much action into it. It's kind of like, wait, what? It, it does that some too with the uh, Takarada, the gangster guy. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, is he part of gangster now? I wish he was. That would make that show a lot better. Oh, yeah, He's with like, the, the commenters, like, turning on Takarada, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. after they actually see, oh, their lives are in danger, money doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Then that crab thing was, uh... That was a, a weapon, I guess? I don't know. Yeah. yeah if, if, that, if it wasn't for the Takarada dub actor, I wouldn't care for that arc at all. <laughs> right. That so, actor what do you think of the better. What do you think of the dub as a whole? I, I loved it. The, the writing's awesome because they do get kind of vulgar with it. I, assume, well, I okay. love the voice acting. See, did Especially you watch the sub? Oh, yes. I uh, I did. I, I watched the sub. Yes. Yeah. Okay. My question is, how did the um, how did the gangster guy sound? I didn't watch those uh, parts that he was in uh, subbed, but I, I watched those dubs. Oh, you watched dub for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I like I like this just the I like this dub not just because it's really good and there's a lot of great performances, but uh, they kind of like they try to get a lot of the English dub voice actors to match the voice of the sub, which I, I always like when a uh, whoever does the casting for this was was just really good, but. When they try to do that, like for example, like Erica Mendez is Ryoko, pretty, pretty comparable to uh, the Japanese voice actress uh, who is Ami Koshimizu, and uh, another one is Nanan. Nanan had a really good voice actress for the Japanese sub. Her name is Mayumi. Sh- Sh- I, I think Tanani, she was like happy in fairy tale, and the one character in her... Kintama. Yeah, and uh, uh, Sarah Williams plays English for Nanon, and uh, I mean, I could I could go on. This dub is really good, um, and it matches the sub. I there's, in my opinion, you could choose either and be totally yeah. fine. I like the as you said, the dub voice actors just fit the characters in the sub so well, like Mako and Gamagori too. At least those are the two that stood out to me. Yeah, Gamagori yeah. is Patrick Seitz. Yeah, he did. He did an amazing job. I can't he fit the character well. well. And then um, one of my personal favorites, Matt Mercer. Oh was, yeah. Uh, Kisugi. And I also like the dub because of the script writing in it. Like they didn't just translate it; they like made the dialogue really fit. Like I was uh, watching some of the Takarada scenes and just seeing how they translated it. They like added all his personality and weird lines, even though that was basically they kept the meaning the same. Yeah, I I really commend the the script writing on this, and as I said earlier, yeah, it's I, one, I think awesome. it's one of the best dubs in all the anime, at least of what I've seen. I feel like it was a really good script writer they had, and then I feel like the actors were just able to improve on it by so much. I think when uh, Aniplex makes a dub, that they make the best dubs. Well, that's hit or miss sometimes, but uh... in my experience, at least, because like uh, uh... Your Line April, Fate Zero. Satsuki Kiryuin 
has a really damn good English voice actress, uh, Carrie Karen Karen. Um, I, I shout out to her. She did really. I good. think she was the one it took the longest for me to like accept as a good dub voice actor. But then looking at more, I think it works. And she kind of has a sort of quiet strength when, during some of the scenes. If that makes sense. Yeah, I would agree with that. She she had like a versatility to her. And it, for some of the more powerful scenes, it kind of felt like she was forcing it. But I think that also fits the character of Satsuki. Yeah, because Satsuki, I guess it's a, a plot point that she's... Yeah, like she has to do it. It's not like she wants to. She like doesn't feel she has any other option. And yeah. that's why in the end, like she's giving up her sword. She doesn't want to fight anymore. Shout out to yeah. voice actors. They're pretty good. I like voice actors. And the voice actress who did Ragi was just perfect for that character, too. Uh, what other questions do we have? I don't think I got to answer the one about fan service. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Thoughts on the fan service? The fan service. Oh, and the one about Trigger and Gynex. Never really got to that, either. Um, for the fan service, though, I don't really like... like fan service really but if it's in there and it's not too in the way i don't really mind uh it's the same for this i don't really mind the fan service for this it doesn't really do anything it's just kind of wacky it just adds to the wacky nature of the show and stuff um uh but i i definitely could see why some people wouldn't want to watch this just because of the fan service it's definitely heavy on that uh least you know a couple dozen times an episode yeah. you get something uh some under boob something even mako has some yeah, fan service mako moments. definitely has a few uh even the dudes i mean there's a whole arc about naked people uh <laughs> and they have an organization and and then there's like a part where like like to defeat the villain uh, one of the like they put this guy in like a like he's like a crab machine or something. It's like the gangster guy or whatever, right? And at the end, the guy takes the stick and he puts it in his hole, his basically his butthole, <laughs> over and over. Oh yeah, it's just really it's a really weird show when it comes to fan service. Um, as for like, as I compare to other Gynex shows or trigger shows I've seen, uh, I'd put this. I wouldn't. I wouldn't veer into Evangelion. I would veer more into yeah, like FL stuff like that. It's more that style, like the zany, crazy stuff. Yeah, um, I was just saying this earlier to, um, in the text chat that it's it's not done in a way like an etchy way where it's trying to like I guess like fetishize or quote unquote turn you on, but it's just done like it's just in a, as I said earlier like in a wacky manner. It's almost like a. It's it's very like god it's like it's the style yeah, i think almost. the only time where the fan service like was wasn't fun was like episode 15 where with ragio and satsuki in the bath but that was supposed to be disturbing so that was very the and then she smacks her butt yeah that was a bit much <laughs> that was yeah. really weird uh, and that, also, at, at that time daughter, didn't you know that yeah. was her daughter too yeah yeah we did yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wasn't uh wasn't wasn't she I mean, also tied up? Uh, yeah, later on. And naked. Yeah. They turned me on. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. I mean. <laughs> God damn it, Bill. Uh, I didn't. We also. Princess I don't think. Princess, I, mean. I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know if you asked this, Rising, but the the music and stuff. Any I song that stands out. Uh, I I really like some of this music. Some of this music is really like it was just like some of it was just bass and drums and super heavy and like these awesome establishing shots with like these like like huge like structures in the background it was i really like that kind of heavy music so it really uh appealed to my and i like just the pure variety in the soundtrack too like the inserts all they like have mako's theme which is all happy and fun and all that and then you have like these epics musics and there's Hallelujah. yes that too uh, and then, what, what was I going to say? Then you have, like, the more techno-type uh, songs. So, yeah, I think there's, like, 
Don't lose your way is amazing. Yeah, that, that's obvious, but that's like one of six or seven amazing uh, songs in the soundtrack. Good soundtrack. Like I would, I would buy this. I would buy this soundtrack. Like, yeah, on I, CD. I think you're gonna make. Like sometimes when I go on long trips, I'll make a CD of random anime music, and Kill a Kill will always have a song on there. I so you, have so you don't lose your way, Rising. I do that enough with that. <laughs> don't lose your way ten thousand miles away from where you originally planned to go. <laughs> How did I get to the ocean? I was trying to get to. I was trying to get to like Wisconsin. I'm in Florida. Okay, so. I think I got through all of my questions. Are there any others that uh, topics you guys want to talk about? What score would you give this anime, guys? I'd give it a seven out of ten. I had a hard seven. time with this one, so I was thinking maybe like an eight and a half or so. I agree with that. I'd give it a seven point five, maybe an eight. Wait, what, what would you give it, Bill? An eight and a half, like. Ah, okay, well, I'm oh. a fanboy of the show, so I give it a 10. Meant to be. <laughs> of you do. Yeah, it might be a 9, depending, as long if I feel like it stays with me a while. But I had a, such a blast watching this, I can't stress yeah, that just... enough. Yeah, my enjoyment is like an 11 out of 10, but, <laughs> yeah. Rating-wise, it's different than enjoyment-wise. I know if this was an anime I watched by myself, I would have watched it in like two or three days because yes. I would have binged if it. If I watched this by myself, I'd probably like give it a six. Watching this with people, it really helped me get through yeah. a lot of this stuff. And uh, I completely disagree. If I if I, I think I asked Rising this multiple times while we were group watching it, or if I could watch <laughs> it on my own. Because <laughs> if I, if he if he let me, I would have watched it maybe two days. <laughs> It was like it was like One Punch Man for me. The way it hyped me up. I think I watched this all in like probably less than a week when I first did. I know I watched like the last like four episodes like in one sitting in a morning. I th- yeah, I think I. Yeah, that was fun. Definitely triggers best anime yeah. so far. Well, Astro disagrees. <laughs> I have one that goes above this. It's very close, <laughs> but I have Girl Lagan above this. That's not a trigger show. Yeah. It's, it's the same staff, essentially, so it depends yeah. how you want to classify it. Gynax broke off yeah. into... No, trip. Gynax is still around, but... That, 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 part of tri- or that part of Gynax. That part of Gynax is now Trigger. That specific staff. <laughs> yeah, Gynax is probably now kind of crap without that part of Trigger. Are they, no, aren't they doing the piano one this season? Or last season? Yeah, that, that one looked good. Piano no more? Did all of them leave, or just most of them? I mean... Uh, Yimaishi and his team went to Trigger, uh, Ano and his team went to Kara, and then I think some others went to A1. Yep. Kara did not fare out as well as Trigger did. Kara takes 10 years to make a movie. Oh, I did want to okay. ask this before we, um, before we end it. What do you think of the, uh, the OPs? They're really good. I especially like the, uh, second opening, how they're, like, showing the characters walk down the runway, all the different, uh, uniforms and, uh, clothes they had. And then, like, oh, the yeah. battle is kind of foreshadowing Satsuki and Ryoko teaming up, but not really, unless you knew what to look for. Well, then, like, the final time they showed that opening, though, they updated it, and they uh, had one final thing change, I think. Yeah, for the o- with the OVA, they added everything that they got in, like, the second half of the show. Oh, yeah, I remember that. But- then, you see all the an- then you see all the Elite Four with their nudist beach clothes, which basically is a belt. <laughs> It's like, eh, no, it's not, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, guys, I'm com- I'm going to work. It's like, you're in a belt. What are you covering up here? Yep. Yeah, I, I love the first OP especially. But I love both. But yeah. the first one to me just stood out because it was it's just this high buildup. Right. And that's, um, as I said, it's always the show. You can tell when an anime is good at making openings, the show itself will be good. So I have a, a weird... King's opinion game. on this yes king's game is my opinion uh king's game out of 10 for for kill i kill no uh um so usually with openings i i forget the visuals almost immediately i i care more about the music for this i don't remember the songs i remember most of the visuals for <laughs> every yeah. one of them you're like this oh i remember has... this i don't remember the song in terms of visuals it's very memorable and it, it's not like not it's some of 
some parts of the openings aren't like super great, but the parts that are really good really stand out. And they're, I mean, they're just really well animated. Like I think there's this one where like Ryoko is fighting like a bunch of people and it just looks really cool. Um, there's the opening to all of them where it does like that zoom out thing or whatever, or the zoom in thing. I can't remember which. I just remember small stuff like that is what I remember from this, and I I can't remember any of the how the music went. So that's how I am usually <laughs> forget the music, remember the opening itself. Except for King's Game, that's the only one I remember the audio for. Yeah, I keep getting that uh, audio stuck in my head. Cold Rain out of ten. Actually, a good song though. No. Like it. It's okay. Well, before they go to the apparently what sounds like metal or heavy metal. It's better than the rest of the show. That was my. Is it bad? That was my favorite part of King's Game. No, no, it's not. Yes. The ending for King's Game is also good as well. Why are we talking about King's? I don't Game? know. Go watch the King's Game podcast. You wanted to hear us talk about that. Yeah, go go watch that. We talking about literally the same thing in there. Yes. Yeah, on Condi's channel. Yes, yeah, link. it's on Condi's channel. I'll put a link somewhere. Maybe, probably. I don't know. I miss. I miss Condi. He's the best. Yeah, Condi's best. Condi out of ten. Is Condi dead? But Bill's replacing him, so it's good. Yep. Thanks. Wow. That's not that a hurt. good replacement. <laughs> Condi was way better. Wow, Astro. Holy crap. Astro, I told you guys, Astro is really savage. I, I, I thought you loved me, Astro. <laughs> I have to live with Rising here, okay? How, how else he would I deal with He fucking destroys people whatever he wants. He has all of the power. <laughs> Alright, Astro's replacing Condi now. I mean, Bill kind of took Condi's role, just the, a random wild card. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's the wild that card, it's just that animals. he has... Right. See, Condi had bad anime as what he was kind of known for. Bill is known for traps, and a lot of them. And rocks. And rocks, and a, bit, a lot of fan service anime. Yeah, we're going to do Icon next. So uh, join us next time for uh, Elkin or Icon on Bill's channel. Oh, no. <laughs> Elk? <laughs> hey, guys, I, I got to go. I can't do that podcast. I got to go. I have a self-inflicted gunshot wound. <laughs> Shot yeah, myself I'm, in I'm the gonna, foot. I'm going to announce my retirement from Nomad. <laughs> <laughs> perfect way to end Nomad oh, uh, um... next month or whatever. Uh, yeah, so final thoughts on Kill a Kill to get back on topic, kind of, I guess. 7 out of 10. It was good. I enjoyed it. Very enjoyable. Uh, very memorable anime. Very good. Yes. Hi! Um, to quickly throw out the... the like, I give it like an 8.5 or so because it was really hype. But I had some issues like where it over-explained some stuff or it just... like It didn't leave much of an impression beyond me behind type, personally. So, yeah. That's what it was for me. I guess I got... I guess I got a question. What what do you think of the OVA? Because I, I think it came out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, the graduation episode. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. I don't remember anything from the OVA. I forget. You guys, when I was the OVA? That was the episode 25. 25. Oh, the last episode. Yeah, when uh, Grioko cut the school in half with a giant pair of scissors. Hey, yeah, that, that was an episode. Oh, yeah, Ray comes back or whatever. Yeah, Ray, it's... I ended up really liking it, and that's part of what made me like Kill It Cause a Hole so much. Because, like, how it... Yeah, because it, like, tied up the different character arcs, had the themes about moving on and, uh, like, yeah, like, putting the past behind you. But still kind of honoring it. I kind of think that was what the last episode of the did, though. The thing, I, the thing I find weird about the last episode is it ends... Well, okay, kind of. It, near the end, at least, you just see everyone, for whatever reason, naked. Just on the ground? Oh, cause, wait, no, because all the life fiber clothing they had just kind of destroyed itself. Or did whatever, because it broke. Uh, but yeah, you just see everyone there. Oh yeah, fiber lost her sunny show sheets. So sheets. So sheets was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Just like her big finishing move. And the and the, the red letters come down. Well, like You say red letters, they're symbols, probably. But I can't read them, so they're symbols to me. Yeah. Astro, go learn Japanese. Uh, Arigato, oh. senpai. You talking to Rising? I'm going to move to Japan and become really Arigato. You said you already lived in Japan. We're not going to talk about it, Astro. <laughs> but we are talking about it. I guess 
I think we're wrapping up since we are out of on topic things to talk about. <laughs> we're making our own improv. But if you if you want to join us for other off topic things, go join C Tactic Server because that's yeah, where yeah. lots of off topic things oh, happen. Boy. Just fifty thousand people <laughs> join. Like, ah God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Bill's channel. I, I wanna throw in sorry for the, this episode Nomad being late. It is late. slightly late. Late? Uh, when was it supposed to come out? Months ago. Two months ago? Oh, yeah, a month ago, two months ago. Well, we don't just don't talk about Parasite. Just... We're gonna do Parasite. <laughs> Listen, everybody, who's watching now? We're doing Parasite. Oh, great. Avi's gonna complete it yeah. and we're gonna review it. Because there's a lot of things we gotta <laughs> say about Parasite, because Parasite's really freaking good. Okay? Yeah, I, I don't wanna talk about Parasite. Parasite. I know, but I'm watching free Avi. right now. That's rising watching free. Avi, you have an obligation <laughs> to finish Parasite. I know, I'm gonna watch oh. it. Gonna watch it. I won't point it. You're doing the exact same I, thing with Darling. You were like, I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna watch it. You haven't watched anything. Well, this, is, this is Darling got trash. Well, okay, it gets slightly better. It's at least worth watching to the end. So you kind Darling of, was trash from the beginning. Says the man who only watched four episodes. Hey, you're trash, okay? The first half was great, and then everything else fell apart. <laughs> it's like it just kind of died halfway through. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, back on topic. Outros, goodbye. I'm the Sea Tactics. You can find me at the Sea Tactics YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C Tactics FEW, or you can type in youtube.com forward slash C forward slash C Tactics. I have a great range of videos there. I got banana fish, banana fish videos. Sorry, banana fish. Uh, I got. Some reviews on Angomoy, Angomoy, Angomoys. Uh, I got, I got mango reviews. I've got animo reviews. I got a ReZero podcast, the greatest ReZero podcast on the internet because we're the only podcast that is a ReZero podcast on the internet. <sighs> Check me out. All right, that was DC Tactics. Uh, we're going backwards then. So, Bill, uh, after the goodbye. Thing. Does he even have chill? Am, am I supposed to do something else? <laughs> Alright, moving on to Bill. <laughs> okay, uh, Astro, outro thingy. Oh, oh, uh, oh quickly before um gets Astro, I just want to say that Bill once had a script where I think he said a oh, sound yeah. voice was funny. Sound oh, voice is hilarious. Or something to that ilk. <laughs> they, they prank that death girl real hard. <laughs> oh my god, I, Bill. I want to cry. <laughs> I can't be friends with Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Astro. Um, Astro325 at Astro325 or YouTube, uh, however it goes, forward slash whatever. Um, I plan to post videos soon, more gaming than anime, so might not be going from here to there. So. And let's see the great of <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um... As I said earlier, I'm Oppie of Visual Evaluations on YouTube, and I do, like, I have Nomad and other podcasts, and to plug one video really quick, because I'm really proud of this one, I did an analysis of Hyoka, so please check that out if you're interested. Whoa, 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 before we go, before we go, there's one thing I gotta mention. We're gonna, the Parasite podcast will be coming. I promise. He's lying. I, I promise. He's We're lying. We're gonna do the Parasite podcast. He's lying. There, I did not watch Parasite for 24 days in a row to not do a podcast. He's on lying. It, okay? It's happening. He's lying. We might record it tonight. I don't know. <laughs> we, we watched 12 episodes of Chuni. Stop <laughs> bringing up things, Avi, okay? Yeah, about 12. <laughs> We watched all of you. Uh, we only had 12 episodes. Bye.